In this talk, I'm going to present an algorithm that solves the approximate closest vector problem with respect to any LP norm in time 2 to 0.802n. And this is joint work with Fritz Eisenbrand. Uh, so first I need to introduce lattices. So a lattice is a discrete set in Rn. Uh, more specifically, we're given a basis uh, uh, consisting of n linearly independent vectors living in Rn. And we take all integral combinations of these vectors. So uh, this here on the left would be a basis of, of this lattice. Uh, it's not unique. This is also a uh, a basis. Uh, in this talk, I'm, I'm going to, to talk about LP norms, uh, but really I'm only going to focus on, on the L1 norm, the L2 norm, and the L infinity norm. So here I drew the corresponding uh, unit normals. Here is with respect to L1, the cross polytope, with respect to L2, the Euclidean ball, and here with respect to L infinity, the, the cube. And in higher dimensions, uh, these norms really start to look different one from each other. So, yeah for quite a bit. Now, the, uh, uh, one of the computational problems we're going to consider is the uh, shortest vector problem, which is the task to find a shortest non-zero lattice vector and with respect to a given norm. So here it would be with respect to L2. Um, another problem is the closest vector problem, where in addition to the lattice, you also have a target T. And the task is to find a closest lattice vector. Here it would be with respect to L infinity. Uh, now, it has been shown that uh, SVP is no harder uh, than CVP um, uh, for any approximation factor and, you, and, and any norm. Uh, so really, if you know how to do CVP, you can also do SVP. Uh, now, in a long sequence of work, uh, starting in the 80s, it has been shown that these problems are NP-hard. and uh, So they're NP-hard for any LP norm and to within almost polynomial factors. And uh, depending on the norm uh, that one considers, um, the difficulty changed quite a bit in establishing these, these hardness results. So, in fact, uh, for a long time, it was a big open question whether SVP with respect to L2 uh, was NP-hard until this was finally settled in 98 by Aitai. And in some very precise sense, this was later on also shown uh, that uh, the L2 norm is easiest for, for these lattice problems. Now, um, so we have a uh, hardness for, for these almost polynomial factors, um, but the hardness does not really seem to stop there. Uh, so these problems are really interesting for virtually any approximation factor. Uh, so currently the best um, we can do in polynomial time uh, is, is only to approximate these problems uh, to within a slightly sub-exponential factor. On the other hand, um, or rather on the other extreme, um, if you want to solve these problems exactly, you need to spend n to the o of n time. And the remarkable thing here is uh, that there is really nothing in between. Uh, so we don't know how to obtain maybe, a, a, say, a polynomial approximation to the shortest vector in, in, in sub-exponential time. Um, and it, this is also especially uh, uh, quite fascinating uh, since for, uh, for approximation factors starting um, at square root of n, uh, both uh, SVP and CVP are in NP, intersected co-NP, and are not believed to be NP-hard anymore. And in fact, uh, cryptographers believe that these problems are still very, very difficult to solve, even for polynomial approximation factors. And now recently there has uh, been also a lot of exciting work uh, to show uh, quantitative hardness results. So. Um, assuming the strong ETH conjecture, uh, it was shown that there cannot be any uh, algorithm for CVP uh, for, for all the LP norms and SVP uh, with respect to L infinity that is faster uh, than 2 to the n. Um, so th this result, um, at least with 2 to the n hardness, does not apply uh, for L2. Um, for, so now for, for, uh, for CVP, uh, for p in general and, and also p uh, equals to 2 and, and, and svp, uh, it was also shown uh, that there cannot be any sub-exponential uh, time algorithms for these problems, assuming the strong ETH conjecture. Uh, however, the constant exponent is much less understood. So um, now there are actually um, sim single exponential time algorithms for these problems, um, um, the, f the first of which uh, were based on randomized seeding. Um, so this was discovered by Aita Kumar and Siva Kumar in 2001. And 
uh, they solve exact uh, SVP in time two to the O of n and also space uh, two to the O of n. Now, uh, they don't so solve uh, exact CVP, um, but only, uh, so for a fixed approximation factor, they run in single exponential time and space. So here it's interesting to note that um, you, you have this trade-off uh, time versus space. So uh, before, so, so you manage to get down from n to the O of n to single exponential, but the space requirement also goes up from polynomial to single exponential. And, recent, and, and, and subsequently, there has been a lot of work uh, to extend uh, this randomized sieving algorithm uh, to work for any norm and um, to bring down the constant in exponent. Now, uh, the currently fastest algorithms um, for a CVP with respect to L2 are, are not based on randomized sieving and they run actually in time two to the end. So there have been two very cool algorithms, uh, one which is based on the Voronoi cell and the other one which is based on discrete Gaussian sampling. Now, both of these problems um, solve CVP with respect to L2 exactly. Uh, so um, exact CVP is not known uh, for, for general LP norms in single exponential time. So, so this is also the only one we, we know how to do exactly. And now um, in light of this and, and really these, uh, these, um, these quantitative lower bounds, we, we asked ourselves, well, where can you get below two to the n? Uh, so, so for these approaches, we, we know how to do uh, two to the n time uh, for the exact problem, but we don't know um, how for, for larger approximation factors, uh, we could get below, at least for, for CVP. And in fact, randomized sieving, at least for, for CVP, is also um, much slower than, than 2 to the n. And in fact, there's only one uh, problem which we uh, currently know how to do faster than 2 to the 0 0.8, uh, than 2 to the n. And uh, so, so this is only known for um, SVP with respect to L2, and it runs in time 2 to the 0 0.802 n. And so it solves uh, SVP with respect to L2 for constant approximation. Uh, and really, um, this is not even known. Um, so this running time, or actually any running time beating uh, 2 to the n uh, for constant approximation factors, is not even known uh, for CVP with respect to L2. And uh, their counterparts with respect to SVP and CVP uh, for P are different than 2. Uh, they require at least three to the n or even four to the n time. Um, so really, uh, there's a huge gap uh, between what we can, can do uh, for SVP with respect to L2 and anything else. Um, yeah. Now, uh, these are uh, the previous uh, fastest algorithms for a constant approximation, uh, because actually we show uh, the, that we can do all of these problems in this time. So we show how to solve a constant factor approximate CVP and SVP for any P in time 2 to 0 0.802 n. And uh, the way we do this is essentially we reduce these problems uh, for constant approximation factors um, to uh, this algorithm that solves SVP with respect to L2 in this time. Now, it's, it's not quite that, we, we actually um, reduce it to the task of sampling many different lattice vectors that are short, but short with respect to L2. And this is uh, incidentally what, what this algorithm does. Now, um, so we need um, uh, uh, this, this algorithm, it's, it's based on randomized sieving, and we need to tweak it a little bit um, uh, for our purpose, uh, for it to solve uh, f for our idea to, to go through. So I would first like to um, um, remind how, um, how, how, uh, the, um, how this algorithm works, what the, what the idea behind it, uh, behind it works. And then I'm going to sketch uh, the main idea for, for SVP and CVP with respect to any LP norm that runs in this time. Okay, um, so let me um, quickly present the idea of randomized sieving, which really dates back to Aitai Kumar and Siva Kumar. Now, in the first stage, uh, we generate many uh, random lattice vectors and we store them in some set S. Now, while there are two lattice vectors um, in the set S that are close, 
uh, we subtract them from each other in order to get a shorter lattice vector. And we continue to do so um, until we can't anymore. So, so really, um, we expect, um, so, so, so we would expect if, if, if this um, uh, goes through, we would expect that we get shorter and shorter vectors, and at the end, we end up uh, with the shortest, say. Uh, now, it's not quite clear um, why we would not only end up with a zero vector, right? So it's possible um, that um, if we continue, continue doing this, we, we just end up with a zero vector. Um, so uh, unless proven otherwise, we, um, this, is, uh, this has to be assumed. So really, the, the ingenious idea of Aita Kumar and Siva Kumar uh, to... Uh, to show correctness of, of this approach uh, was on the one hand to, to, to introduce perturbation. Uh, so we would like to argue that at any stage of the algorithm, um, V, uh, the lattice vector V being in our, in our set, um, is equally likely than V plus S. Uh, so here typically um, S um, is the shortest lattice vector, but really it can be any lattice vector. Right, so um, if this holds uh, during, uh, during the second stage, we're sure uh, that it's unlikely uh, to end up, uh, well, um, it, it wouldn't be a problem to end up with uh, zero because then it's equally likely uh, to end up with uh, S instead, which is the vector that uh, interests us. Um, so uh, the in ingenious idea um, to, to, to guarantee this was uh, to base um, this part on a representative of, uh, of V and, and a representative of, of W. Um, so uh, why does this guarantee it? Uh, guarantee it? So um, morally, uh, when we uh, uh, first sample these, these random lattice vectors, uh, V should be equally likely than V plus S. And it's only here where we base our decision um, on, on V or V plus S. So, so we might do something different uh, for V plus S than we would for V. So in order to, uh, to sort of, um, show correctness, to, to show that, uh, that this holds, um, um, we base our decision here on a representative which, uh, which is close to V and, and W respectively, but which is oblivious to S. Um, so it's the same representative uh, for, for V and for V plus S. So, so they both have the same representative. And now uh, we can really conclude that uh, during the whole algorithm, um, uh, if we don't look at, 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 at the actual lattice vectors, which we don't need to because we, we base our decision on, on, on this representative, we still have this uncertainty left. Um, so we're not afraid of, of only ending up with the zero vector. And uh, so this is a bit technical, but at least for constant approximation factors, this will not affect the running time of, of, of the seeding algorithm. However, what de really determines the, the running time of, of, of this approach is, is the following uh, problem. Uh, so, so the second stage, we need to have enough uh, vectors so that we see two of them which are close. And this as related to the kissing number, which is the, the maximal number of, uh, of, of uh, vectors of unit norm that have all uh, larger pairwise difference. So um, if, if you have these uh, um, uh, vectors, which um, all have um, uh, uh, difference larger than one, then we don't make progress in the second stage. So we, so we really need at least this many in order to guarantee that the second stage works. And this uh, really depends uh, crucially on, on the norm. So for L infinity, this, this kissing number is provably three to the N. For LP norms, um, we, we, don't, we know it's at most three to the N, but we, we don't really have better bounds. And in fact, the previous best algorithms for L infinity, they ran in time exactly three to the N. And uh, for LP norms, it required even more time. And for SVP, the situation is best. Uh, so in fact, we, 
we know that the kissing number for L2 is at most 2 to the 0.401n. And the currently fastest algorithm really runs in the square of this number, uh, which is just due to the fact that we need to check all tuples. Um, okay, so really this is what determines uh, the, the performance of, of, of this randomized seeding. And it's, it's best for, for L2. Uh, so now we come um, to the algorithm we're going to use. So really it's only a, um, a, a tweaked version of an already existing algorithm. Uh, so we have um, this special vector S in the lattice. Um, we have some convex body, okay. And now we can sample uh, lattice vectors, uh, non-zero lattice vectors in an IID fashion so that uh, on the one hand they're short, so they're shorter than uh, the Euclidean norm of the special vector times some fixed constant. And on the other hand, we still have this, this randomness left. Um, so we, could, so we can still decide in the end whether we have vi or vi plus s, at least with some probability. Now, uh, the, the time of, 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 of this algorithm, uh, it takes 2 to the 0.802n and 2 to the 0.401n uh, just to, uh, to set it up. So, so this follows from the SVP2 algorithm. And afterwards, um, since we already spent this much time and this much space, uh, we can really uh, sample 2 to the 0.401n vectors for free, uh, so without affecting uh, the running time, uh, the final running time. Uh, now, and oops, and there are two uh, interpretations for for uh, for the second condition. Um, one will be more convenient for SVP, and this will be that we can assume that all of these lattice vectors are are different. Um, so uh, so why is that? Well, if it's likely that a collision occurs, then so is the probability of, of, of finding S just by setting uh, the convex body K to be equals to, uh, to zero. Um, so we can really, for SVP, we will assume that all of these um, lattice vectors are different. Uh, for CVP, we will actually use another interpretation. Um, so we will um, argue over a, a, a bad event and we will show that, that a bad event is likely. And now uh, we can still flip the coin and decide whether we add S or not. And if we add S, this would correspond to a good event. Uh, so there are really two interpretations to, uh, to this randomness. Okay, so let's sketch the idea for SVP with respect to L infinity. Um, so we scale the lattice so that the shortest vector with respect to L infinity um, has L infinity norm equals to one. So um, it's here. Um, and now we sample short a lattice vectors, uh, but short with respect to, to, to S. So uh, no longer than uh, C times uh, the Euclidean norm of S. Now, all of these, these vectors we sampled, uh, they're quite poor uh, estimates to, to, um, uh, to S. Um, but now what we can do is to argue, okay, um, let's cover um, this, this big ball uh, by cubes of side length C and N many. So now we have more uh, lattice vectors uh, than we have cubes. So, so in particular by, by, by the pigeonhole principle, uh, two of these lattice vectors must be in the same cube. Now, um, if, if the side length of, of of this cube is a constant, then in fact, uh, this minus this vector gives us a constant approximation to S. Now, for, for this idea to be efficient, uh, we, we only need uh, that the number of cubes required uh, for C being a constant uh, to be less than 2 to the 0.401n. And, and then, uh, I mean, uh, th this, this procedure runs in time 2 to the 0.802n. Uh, because right, we, we need to check all tuples and, and, and just output the, the smallest pairwise difference. Um, so really this, uh, this boils down to a very uh, geometric statement. Can we cover uh, square root of n times the Euclidean ball with uh, 2 to the 0.401 n translates of a scaled cube uh, where the scaling factor is a constant? Uh, so, so these types of questions have been considered quite a bit in, in, in high dimensional convex geometry and are known under the translative covering number. So how many uh, translates of L do you need in order to cover K? 
And, and this is, um, so there are some really cool approaches to it. Uh, one would be, um, uh, to, um, really you can reduce this problem to the classical set cover problem uh, combined with uh, volume estimates on the Minkowski sum of K and L. And then this provides you a quite constructive way on, on, on how to actually uh, um, uh, compute such, such a covering. And, and so, so this Minkowski sum then follows, uh, so, so this bound on, on, on the volume follows from intrinsic volumes. Alternatively, um, as was pointed out to me by Noah Stevens Davidovitz, um, at least for LP balls, uh, you can count integer points. And, and, and you also um, can show this. But in any case, um, for, for, so this works. Uh, so for constant approximation factors, we can solve SVP uh, for P greater or equals to two in time to the 0.802n. Now for CVP, the, the situation is slightly different. Um, so first let's scale the lattice so that the closest vector to T um, has distance one uh, with respect to L infinity. Now we're going to, to build a, a, a new basis, which is going to, to live one dimension higher. So in Rn plus one. So uh, the, we're going to append zeros to the old uh, lattice basis. And uh, we're going to slightly lift the target T. Uh, so this gives us a, a new lattice, which we can really subdivide into layers. So the zero uh, layer is where we don't use um, a T and really corresponds to the old lattice. Uh, the first layer is where we use T once, uh, the second layer where we use twice, etc. And so our, uh, so previous, so, so, so so, so the, uh, the previous um, closest vector now corresponds to, to this special vector here, S, uh, which, is, uh, which is just uh, T minus W, um, so the, the, uh, the closest distance, um, and epsilon. Here, um, epsilon, we want to choose quite small. Um, just a constant, but, but quite small. And now if you just run um, SVP2 and we try to apply the same idea as before, it, it, it might be that um, we only get um, vectors um, on, on the zeroth hyperplane or on the second hyperplane, and this is of no use to us. So really we need um, a, a lattice vector on this layer, which is uh, close uh, to zero epsilon. Um, um, so, so really this makes the, uh, the problem harder uh, than, than for SVP2. So we need a new idea and this would be um, to first um, to, well, we find a constant C so that we can cover each of these layers uh, intersected with, with this radius um, to be covered uh, by 2 to the 0.401 n um, um, flat cubes. Um, now, uh, by the previous, um, uh, as we have seen, we can choose C to be a constant. Okay, and now we generate um, lattice vectors, um, namely enough that each um, that um, so, so that um, we're guaranteed uh, that there are two lattice vectors which lie in the same uh, flat cube, right? Because we sample uh, enough lattice vectors. So in particular, uh, they are in the same uh, uh, translated flat cube. Uh, so taking their pairwise difference, we end up in the zeroth layer. Now this is not uh, where, where we want it. However, uh, we still have the randomness left. So we can argue that with equal probability, um, we actually end up here uh, in the layer that interests us. And here, uh, this would be a constant factor approximation to uh, the closest lattice vector, uh, closest vector. And really, uh, the same idea also works for P greater or equals to two. Okay, so now um, for the closest vector problem uh, for LP norms between one and two, and actually also SVP uh, for P between one and two, this uh, idea does not work. Um, so Actually, if, so if, if we sample many uh, vectors which are, which are short with respect to L2, we cannot guarantee 
uh, the two of them have have a small pairwise difference with respect to L1. And this is really because the, the, the volumes are off. So, I mean, it's not possible to see in two dimensions, but really in, in high, high dimensions, it really starts to kick in. Uh, the volume of, of the ball is n to the o of n larger uh, than the volume of the cross polytope. Uh, so really, the previous approach doesn't work. But instead, um, there's actually a, a somewhat even simpler approach. Namely, you can cover uh, the cross polytope uh, by few uh, scaled balls. Um, so, so there's a really cool uh, theorem uh, due to Kashin that, that says that the cross polytope is essentially um, 1 over square root of n times uh, the unit ball. And so uh, knowing this, uh, it shouldn't be too surprising that you can actually cover uh, the cross polytope um, by, by balls, by small balls, um, that do not overlap uh, the cross polytope too much. All right. Now, uh, this epsilon here, this really depends on the approximation factor. So uh, the smaller you want epsilon, the bigger this, uh, this, this, this constant gets, naturally. Now, uh, the, I think the idea is clear. Um, so we compute this covering. This can be done efficiently. And now, with the centers of, of these balls, uh, we run uh, CVP with respect to L2, with these uh, centers as targets. And um, so doing this, we, we cover all of the cross polytope and um, we'll return either the, uh, the closest lattice vector or a good approximation thereof, uh, since uh, these balls do not overlap more than a constant factor. So this uh, really gets, uh, I'll say, a constant factor approximation uh, to the closest vector problem with respect to L1, and this in the desired running time. And this is it. Thanks for your attention.